guys and welcome to the Amazon Neptune console which provides us with database services. It provides us with high performance and scalability. Amazon Neptune is optimized for low latency and high throughput applications. It's capable of processing graph queries over billions of relationships in milliseconds. It supports up to 15 read replicas to scale query throughput to 100 kiloseconds of queries per second. So let us start exploring this console through heading straight to the databases section. From here, we will go ahead and create our very first Neptune database. So we click on create database. This will take us to the page of creating a database. As we can see, we have engine options first. So the engine type is Neptune, of course, and the version. We choose the version of our choice that suits us. It could be the Neptune R2, it could be R6, R3, or the first one. So let's go with Neptune R2. For the settings, we have the database cluster identifier. So we need to set a name for this identifier. It is set by default. You can leave it or you can change it so that you can uh, specify it on your own. For templates, we must choose a template uh, according to the use case and the application that we're going to develop. It's either used for production, for the high availability and fast consistent performance, or for development and testing purposes. So let's go with production first. For the database instance size, we choose how large we'd like our instance to be according to how how much uh, megabytes or gigabytes we need so let's stay with the x large to get a great amount of um, gigabytes for our storage options now for the availability and durability multi availability zones deployment we can either create read replica in different zones or not let's create the read replica in different zones Connectivity options. For the VPC, the virtual private crowd, it could be left as the default or we could create a new VPC of our own. It's recommended to stay as default. Now for additional conf connectivity configuration, you could choose a subnet group of your own. It's set as default. Now for the VPC security group, there's an existing VPC security group or we could create a new one. Let's keep the existing one. For the database port, we'll leave it as it is for the application connections. Now for tags, we could add a tag if we'd like, and we can add up to 50 tags as always. We select a key for the tag at first and a value right over here. And we could keep on adding until we reach 50. In case we'd like to supply additional information configuration, we click on additional configuration and supply the database instance identifier with a name, the database cluster parameter group with a name, the database parameter group with a name, and they are all, as we can see, set as default. Or we could go ahead and choose them according to our needs and specifications. And then after we are done and we go over all the information that we have selected, if it suits us, we click on create database. If not, we go ahead and review everything and edit whatever needs to be changed. By this, after completing this process, we would...